Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an action, adventure, sci-fi film called Ready Player One. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 2045, in a place called the Stacks in Columbus, Ohio, Wade resides with his aunt and her boyfriend in a low-income community filled with precariously stacked trailers and vehicles. As he heads out from their house, his neighborhood seems drawn into their own world using virtual simulation. Like millions of others, Wade finds himself escaping into the Oasis, a virtual world where everything is possible. He accesses the Oasis via a visor and haptic gloves as he hides in a scrap van. In this virtual reality world, people can enter as avatars to play video games, entertain themselves, and seek pleasures they can't find in the real world. It is a world where imagination is the limit. People can design their own look however they want, either they want to look like their favorite cartoon or their ideal self. They can do whatever they want and go as far as they can. The Oasis serves as both a massively multiplayer online role-playing game and a virtual society, and its currency is the world's most stable currency. Once people accumulate items in the Oasis and their avatar dies, they will lose everything. Wade's avatar in this world is Parzival. Despite never meeting them in person, he frequently interacts with his best friend H, a massive muscular mechanic, and Samurai Dido, and Fighter Show. James Halliday and Ogden Morrow created the Oasis in 2025. Unfortunately, Halliday died in 2040 and has left a contest in which whoever finds his Easter egg will gain ownership of the Oasis and its parent company. Since the company is worth billions of dollars, many users have been trying to figure out the clues that lead to Halliday's Easter egg for years. Wade enjoys deciphering the contest that James Halliday created before he passed away. In the video, Halliday uses an avatar named, Anorak the All-Knowing, explaining the contest mechanics where there would be three challenges to complete. Upon winning the challenges, they will get a key and a clue for the next challenge. Whoever obtains all three keys, and the egg first will inherit Halliday's personal fortune of $500 billion as well as complete control of the Oasis. Wade primarily searches on his own, even though many egg hunters, also known as gunters, have teamed up such as the Sixers under Innovative Online Industries, or IOI for short. Though the company's CEO Nolan Sorrento makes most of his money from products and other gear that allow people to have the advantage inside the Oasis, he wants to find the egg primarily to increase money's influence from the virtual world. The hunt has been going on for five years, yet no one has been able to locate the first key. The only thing found was the first challenge, which is a racing game set in a simulated city of New York. Wade and H attempt to race through the event once more. While most competitors are riding their well-equipped race cars, Wade rides the one-of-a-kind DeLorean from Back to the Future. While waiting for the race to start, Wade sees a female racer on a bike, and she captivates him. The race begins and immediately players are eliminated. Since H happens to be a mechanic, he uses his knowledge to upgrade his truck, crushing all other cars along with the race. However, when Kong arrives, it destroys the road, leading to his failure to end the race. Still, he cheers for his best friend, Wade, who takes another route. During the race, Wade takes advantage of getting the coins from those who didn't make it, but when Kong appears, he suffers the same fate. On the other hand, the female biker, named Artemis, is still on her way and planning to jump over the broken road. Wade realizes that Kong hides beneath the destroyed road as a trap, causing him to grab Artemis. They stumble upon each other while Kong crushes Artemis' bike. Near the end of the challenge, no one can get past King Kong. Afterward, Wade persuades H to assist Artemis in repairing her bike for the following race. While H is repairing her bike, Wade and Artemis talk about Halliday and the race. While conversing, Artemis reveals that she's willing to risk everything to save Oasis from IOI she argues that a real gunner won't just do it for the money. In the real world, Wade is lying on his bed and remembers Artemis' words earlier about how Halliday hates making rules. Using the visor, he goes to the Halliday Journals, a place in the Oasis that serves as a personal shrine to Halliday. With the help of the mechanical curator, Wade observes a memory in which Halliday and Mora discuss the future of their creation. While watching, Wade seems to know what the video is about as he recites Halliday's lines. When he is about to leave, he hears Halliday claim he despises rules and wishes they could be reversed. The following day, Wade returns to the first challenge. While the rest of the cars move forward, he reverses his DeLorean, revealing an underground roadway that leads him beneath the racetrack, past obstacles, and even Kong. Finally, he arrives at the finish line at Central Park, where he encounters Anorak, who bestows the copper key, a hundred thousand coins, and a clue. Upon getting the prize, his avatar name, Parzival, appears first on the scoreboard. At IOI, several board members express their concern to Sorrento now that Parzival's name has been added to the scoreboard. Sorrento, on the other hand, is reasonably sure there is nothing to be concerned about. Despite this, he enters the oasis, where he meets Iraq, a bounty hunter, obtaining a powerful item known as the Orb of Osuvox. Sorrento also hires him to keep an eye on Parzival and kill him in the oasis. At the same time, Wade spends his newly acquired wealth on a shopping spree, impulsively buying the Zemeckis Cube, Grenade, and finally the X-1 suit, where he can wear it in the real world while playing the Oasis. He then informs about the secret passage in the race with H, who tells Dido and shares it with Sho. Artemis also makes it upon seeing Wade race backward during the race, making them the top five. 
Meanwhile, Wade spends his free time pondering the clues about the next challenge, leading to a woman named Kira. To confirm his theory, he visits the Halliday journals with a swarm of fans until Artemis arrives and helps him disguise himself. They head into Halliday's journals and watch a recording of a meeting between Halliday and Moro. Halliday recalls taking a woman named Kira out on a date, but instead of going dancing, he took her to see a movie. Kira eventually married Moro, but Wade notes that despite her apparent importance in both of their lives, this is the only time they mention her name in the journals. The curator mulls it over but concludes that Wade's analysis is correct. Wade then receives a quarter from the curator and a dance invitation from Artemis at the Distracted Globe, a unique club designed by Halliday. That night, while Wade is ecstatic to meet Artemis, H warns him that she could be using him or that Artemis could be a dude, warning Wade to limit his expectations and focus on their goal. Despite H's protests, Wade decides to dress up as Buckaroo Banzai, an outfit from his favorite movie. When Wade arrives at the Distracted Globe, fans greet and take a picture of him until Artemis approaches him from behind. Later that night, Artemis leads Wade into a zero-gravity dance floor located at the center of Distracted Globe. The pair get their grove on and dance to 70s disco music. Since Wade is wearing the X1 suit, he can feel Artemis from the simulation and finally confesses his feelings to her and asks to meet her in real life. Artemis dismisses his idea, for he might be disappointed. Still, Wade doesn't seem to bother, eventually telling her his real name. Unbeknownst to them, I Rock is listening intently. Upon revealing his identity, the IOI crashes the party, attempting to assassinate Wade before the bounty hunter can strike. Fortunately, he and Artemis manage to flee using the Zemerix cube, bringing back time 60 seconds. Once safe, Artemis reveals to Wade that her father died in the IOI loyalty center while paying off his debt. She can't afford to get distracted from her mission to find the egg and potentially prevent further harm to others, so she dismisses Wade's confession and leaves. Meanwhile, I Rock conducts additional research and quickly provides Sorrento, Wade's complete profile. Sorrento then informs Finale Xander, one of his associates, about Wade, hiring her to eliminate Wade in real life. The following day, Sorrento offers Wade many incentives, including a $25 million bonus to help the company find the egg. Wade is unimpressed and sees through Sorrento's facade. Wade declines, but not before Sorrento admits that he knows where Wade resides in the real world and tells him he plans to destroy it. Wade rushes out of his secret hiding spot in the real world to warn his aunt and her boyfriend, but it's too late. The stack on which their home is built explodes and crashes to the ground. Wade then tries to contact his friends, but an unidentified man with a tattoo on his face knocks him out and kidnaps him. The following day, Wade wakes up while still hand-tied. Artemis, whose real name is Samantha Cook, confronts him, which he suddenly knows that she's Artemis in the Oasis. It turns out that she and a few others have a base of operations near the stacks and IOI Samantha then takes her to a rooftop and tells her about their operation. While a large birthmark on her face bothers Samantha, Wade assures her that he is not disappointed with how she turns out to be in real life. When they are about to kiss, Samantha thinks she may have figured out what the first challenge's clue meant. Artemis realizes that the clue, the leap not taken, was Halliday referring to not taking the step to be with Kira. The group gathers in the Oasis and heads to Halliday's journals to test her theory and inquires about the films that Halliday may have taken Kira to on their date. Among the movies that Halliday watched in that time frame, the next clue leads to The Shining. The curator then directs the group at the Overlook Hotel. They aim to find the key somewhere in the hotel. While inside, H, who hasn't watched The Shining has no idea what is in store for them. He gets separated and encounters the twin children and then the naked lady from the movie. Despite his ignorance, he overcomes several terrifying situations. Still, when they hear music coming from one of the rooms, they begin to doubt their initial assumption of a specific key in the film set. Artemis discovers that Halliday's biggest fear is not the movie or any books, but his greatest fear is to kiss a girl, which is the leap not taken. They enter a ballroom where they come across Kira, who dances with a group of zombies over a large pit. Artemis takes the leap by jumping into the hole, making the rest of the group dragged out of the film. Artemis eventually makes it past the zombies and invites Kira to dance, then suddenly Anorak appears and offers her the jade key to the next clue. The rest of the group soon receive their own jade key, only to be followed in by a swarm of Sixers, who are then attacked by the horrors of the Shining. Sorrento now knows that Wade is still alive, and he immediately informs Xander about an unidentified, tattooed man who took Wade from the stacks. She eventually tracks down one of Samantha's associates. She follows him to her hidden location. IOI personnel storm their secret cooperation, and Wade tries to persuade Samantha to accompany him on his escape, but she sacrifices herself so that he can escape. Xander then confronts Samantha, claiming that IOI now owes her outstanding debts and is taken to IOI's loyalty center. As Wade makes his escape, he runs into a woman, Helen, who reveals herself to be H in the Oasis. They hide in a van where Wade meets Toshiro and 11-year-old Shoto, who is Dido and Sho, respectively. Meanwhile, at the IOI, they already hack the third challenge and discover that it leads to Castle Anorak on Planet Doom, the most dangerous place in the Oasis. The final challenge is revealed as an Atari 2600 with all the consoles games, but only one will unlock the last key. Sorrento activates the Orb of Osu box, preventing anyone from entering the castle. At the same time, Sorrento orders many Loyalty Center employees, including Samantha, to plant explosive charges outside the front door. On the other hand, 
Wade tells H what he remembers of Sorrento's office to save Samantha. The two of them create a digital parallel of the location, hijacking Sorrento's online feed before he can return to the real world. Sorrento falls into their trap and eventually reveals Samantha's cellar, leading her to break free. Knowing IOI plans, she decides to remain in the facility and disguises herself as an IOI soldier to deactivate the Orb of Osibox. Meanwhile, Wade and his friends then send out a live message across the Oasis, informing everyone of Sorrento's actions and requesting that anyone who believes in justice come to Planet Doom to assist them. As a result, many people arrive, ready to fight against IOI forces, while Samantha manages to bring the orb's protection down. A massive mob of video game characters, as well as people from sci-fi movies and iconic films, appear ready to help Wade. A little while later, she makes it outside the castle and finds Wade, but not before Sorrento unleashes his Mechagodzilla armored suit on them. H activates the Iron Giant hoping it could defeat Mechagodzilla, and Dido transforms into a Gundam to battle the massive mech, but both fail. Samantha manages to take down Sorrento by launching a mad ball bomb into Mechagodzilla's head. Sorrento then goes on a maniacal rampage through his real-world facility, convinced that Samantha is still inside his company. Realizing the consequences of killing Sorrento's avatar, Wade kills Samantha's character in the Oasis to save her, and she flees IOI and meets up with the rest of the group in H's truck. Finally, Wade and Sho return to the game and make it to the final challenge. They watch one of the Sixers plays Adventure, which he wins but still fails to get the price. Upon further observation, Wade realizes how to get the final key. Sorrento and Iraq arrive, offering one last deal to Wade, but not before threatening to unleash the Cataclysm, a weapon that will wipe out every avatar on Planet Doom. Wade tries to stop the Madman, but Sorrento activates the device, killing all the avatars inside the Oasis. To everyone's surprise, Wade is still alive in the aftermath of the explosion. It turns out that the quarter the curator gave him at the Halliday's Journal was apparently an extra life token. Wade then starts playing Adventure, and the Oasis starts broadcasting what he's doing. The goal of the final challenge, according to Wade, is to find the game's hidden Easter egg, which some consider being one of the first in video game history. As a result, the ice crystals shatter, forming Anorak holding the final crystal key. Anorak hands him the crystal key, and Wade heads into a massive vault with three keyholes. On the other hand, IOI and their forces have located H and his truck in the real world, causing Wade to invite anyone in the vicinity to help them since the IOI associates are trying to get rid of them. After the long attempts of unlocking the vault, he finally opens it leading to a castle filled with gold. His spectators seem delighted, including the scholars, to finally see the end game of the contest. Anorak then offers papers to sign. When he is about to sign the contract, Wade remembers when Halliday forced Moro to sign over his company shares, telling him that it is the biggest mistake in his life and that he doesn't want to make the same mistake. Upon passing the test, Anorak's avatar transforms into Halliday, and the chamber transforms into Halliday's childhood room. Inside the room, Halliday shows Wade a particular button, which can erase the entire oasis. Halliday's younger self appears to be inside the room playing a video game. Halliday then heads into his drawer to search for the golden egg. Halliday then gives Wade the Easter egg, telling him that while the virtual world can be entertaining, the actual world and interacting with real people are more important. When Halliday is about to leave, together with his younger self, Wade asks if he's really dead, but he doesn't answer and simply bids goodbye and leaves. Later on, the group makes it to the stacks, but when he notices that Wade is holding the Easter egg, he startled and surrenders. The police suddenly arrive and arrest Sorrento in finale. Shortly after, Ogden Morrow arrives at the truck, congratulating Wade and talking about the Oasis. However, Wade excuses himself as he confesses his love for Samantha and wants to take a leap with her. They kiss inside the truck while the rest of their friends are watching. When suddenly, Moro and some of the company's lawyers arrive, demanding Wade's signature. He claims, however, that he wants to share the prize with his friends, to which Moro agrees. A little while later, the group, named High Five, heads out of the bus as the people praise and cheer. Meanwhile, while Moro and Wade talk about Halliday, Moro hands him a coin, revealing that he was the curator, praising Wade's detective work for finding out about Kira. Though he was instructed not to give players any direct hints, Wade's insight into their relationship impressed Moro and decided to give him a little boost. Wade even tells Moro that Halliday's greatest fear is not to kiss Kira but to lose his only friend, Moro. Delighted about the new owners of the Oasis, Moro willingly joins them as the consultant. The new owners prohibit any loyalty centers from operating in the Oasis, forcing IOI to shut down. They also turn off the Oasis on Tuesdays and Thursdays, following Halliday's advice to get out and experience the real world. This story shows an escapism allegory that uses technology to engage all the senses, giving the impression that this fictional world is real. The Oasis presents itself as a possible alternative to the miserable and depleted world that humanity has created in 2045. At the same time, it also represents a dream world, where people could envision what could be accomplished if people focus their efforts on the actual world rather than wasting their time in the Oasis. It is a world of heroic quests, zero-gravity nightclubs, and a stable society with excellent education systems and delimited combat zones. It achieves a level of safety while also providing access to jobs and education that the real world cannot offer. The story also shows the importance of focusing our attention on the real world, where everything really matters. Halliday has to spend a long time looking for the Easter egg on his desk and his drawers towards the ending. 
However, when it's time to hand it over to Wade, he gives it to him as if it was never essential. That is because it isn't. What matters most to Halliday is that Wade understands his regrets about his life. Halliday has always felt more at ease in video games than in real life. He always felt more at ease in the past than in the present. After losing his chance at love and his friendship with his best friend near the end of his life, Halliday realized the importance of reality, which he described as the only thing that's real. He gave Wade a greater price than anything else in the game when he taught him that lesson of realization that he can't spend his entire life escaping. The button's existence suggests that the world would be a better place without systems like the Oasis. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.